Sorry, I was on mute. Sorry. Ah, oh, darn it. There goes my, there goes my opening. Uh, but anyway, yes. Yes, it's the future, 2024. Thank you for joining me for today's live stream. Ah, Whelmed, you, you're ahead of me there, gifting five memberships. That's right. Uh, I gift, it's the first stream of the week, so I'm going to gift uh, my five memberships as well. I always gift five memberships to kick off every week uh, because I'm trying to match your guys' incredible generosity. All right, there we go. Here it comes. Oh, thank you, 80s model. Thank you so much. That's, that's my favorite way for you to support this channel because uh, it goes uh, towards somebody else as well. Ah, uh, uh, thanks, Sensation. Hey, Sensation. Thanks, Not Modern Painter. Uh, thank you all for uh, donating uh, those memberships. It's uh, really appreciated by me and for the people who uh, receive them. Uh, all right, so it's 2024. It's, uh, what, day four of the year? And we're already into the drama. Oh, man. In fact, that Star Wars uh, kerfuffle the other day was so bad, I don't even want to talk about it. I was like, that's just, that's, a, that's, that's, that's what it is. That's a trap. That's clickbait. I'm not going over there. You know, like, let's just see how it plays out. Uh, but we've got, we've got three really good stories to discuss for today. Um, and so I'm quite thrilled that, it, you know, for the first, you know, it's a slow week otherwise. There's hardly anything coming out. Uh, I was looking at last year. I was like, what was last January like? And last January was incredible <clears throat> because uh, there was not only The Last of Us coming out. Hey, Emilio, thank you for gifting five memberships. So that was a big show. And then also James Gunn had just taken over DC. So we were all like, ooh, who's, who's uh, still in the DCU and who isn't? That's right, Megan. Uh, it was just a really, really, um, it was really a lot going on. And it's just, I think this is still repercussions from the two strikes. Uh, hey, Optimus Prime Ribs. I love your name. Thank you for gifting a membership. Uh, so there's some stuff coming up, but it's going to be pretty slow probably until like March. But as I said, we have stories to discuss. All right, so the way live streams work, just to remind you of the rules. Uh, please try to stay on topic, and I will not be really acknowledging any questions or comments until I open each section up to those uh, at the end of each segment. And then, of course, at the end, you can ask me anything you'd like for the final 10 minutes of the stream. All right, so let's get started. Story number one. Boop. Steven Yoon. All right, let's just, let's just say bottom line. Bottom line, he's no longer in Thunderbolts. That's, that's, that's the takeaway, right? Uh, and I have to say, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a murky, crazy situation. Uh, the trade said that it was because of scheduling conflicts, and Stephen Yoon uh, confirmed that. So <clears throat> it was because of conflicts. Uh, and so I have to say, I think it's for the best, to be honest with you. Uh, and not because I think Thunderbolts is going to be bad. I think Thunderbolts, in fact, is going to be quite good. But because... I don't think Steven Yoon is a good fit with Sentry based on what I've heard about the approach to the character, right? Now, Sentry, and by the way, Sentry and Steven Yoon were never confirmed, officially confirmed for this movie. But if Sentry were in the Thunderbolts movie, the question you have to ask yourself is what defines the character? What is primarily the biggest thing about him? Is it his look? this golden god look, or is it that he has a split personality? Uh, if, you just, if you just go with the split personality, and I'm curious, like, what do you think is the most important about the character? Let's do a poll. I know you love the polls. All right, hold on. Start a poll. That's right. They already had well, Adam Warlock, Nick, so this is crazy to me. So what defines Sentry to you? That's right, not modern history. Poly, poll, poll. Uh, his look. Uh, split personality. And then I guess you could say both. Both. And then the other option is I have no idea who he is. <laughs> I have no idea who he is. All right, there you go. All right, there's the poll. And anyone can vote in a poll. Only members can chat, but anyone can vote in a poll. All right? Uh, so uh, if it's just his split personality and you create a new look 
for the MCU that fits with Steven Yoon, then I think Steven Yoon would have been an incredible sentry. Uh, like a super soldier where you never know who you're talking to, the good guy or the bad guy, that's cool stuff. But if you're going to recreate Sentry's look, and there he is, you can see him there, he's uh, flying out of the frame on the, on the uh, uh, over here, there he is, there's Sentry in the comics. If you're going to recreate his look to the point where you're just sticking Steven Yoon's head on his body, you know, in a Shazam-style suit that can stand on its own, I don't think that would have worked. That's right, it is very Moon Knight. You know, I didn't think of that. But I think with Moon Knight, you're inside Moon Knight's head and you're aware of who's in charge. But I think with Sentry, the point is, well, a big, here's the thing. A big point of Sentry's split personality, you know, was that it was a surprise in the comics. Everybody was like, what? You were wondering who his villain was and it turned out to be him. So that was the big shocker. But that's the problem when you're basing this stuff on source material, it's no longer a surprise. Everybody knows who Sentry is. And as everybody says, who Sentry, and goes to videos like myself that fill you in on the comic book counterpart, you know, you already know what that is. Uh, that's right, Malignant did this as well. Uh, you know, and I loved Malignant. That was a great surprise. Loved that. So I wouldn't even describe him as evil Superman because he goes back and forth between the two. Sometimes, you know, he's very much a split personality on the one. It's like if Batman and Joker were in the same body you know, and had the same power set. And if you're looking at it from the outside in, well, then that's really cool because if the character, if the, if the actor and Steven Yeun could do this, if they don't tell, you know, you don't know who you're talking to. What would be the tell? What would give away if you were talking to the good or the bad sentry? And that's where it becomes really interesting. But again, if they're just going to stick Steven Yeun in that suit, or if they just were going to stick him in that suit, I don't think, you know, I agree with you, George. This seems very dark for Marvel. This whole movie seems too dark for Marvel. I'm like, are you going to kill somebody? I had this to say this later on, but I was like, some of those super soldiers better be red shirts because that's the whole reason to only have so many, you know, uh, super soldiers. So you're going to take some of them out. I'm like, we could lose a few of those. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I want to see Sentry mean business. Juan, I'm not sure what the rating is, but if you've seen Beef and you see how that season ends, oh, it could be rated R. It could be. Oh, that would be amazing. All right, so let me just see what the poll says. This is very encouraging. <clears throat> All right, so let's see here. 59% of you who have, have absolutely no idea who Sentry is, which just goes to show how bad the comic book marketplace is because, you know, if you're at all even a casual Marvel fan, you know who Sentry is. 17% uh, of you feel that he's got to have both. He's got to have that look. Well, then you would not have been happy with Steven Yeun in the role. 14% uh, agree with me that feel it's the split personality, uh, although that's a low number. And then 9% feel just his look is the most important. But when you combine that with both, you've got like in the mid-20s, mid to high 20s, as to who, you know, that the look is important. So, and also we'll see. I think that, you know, I, I'm very curious to see who they decide to cast instead. Who will take this role over? Uh, I mean, at the one hand, they might decide not to bend, you know, to race bend the role at all, but then that's going to maybe, you know, I don't, <clears throat> I think that it just opens up a really big can of worms for them. You know, like if, you know, some of you are saying Alan Richson, some of you are saying Ryan Gosling. But then you're like, whoa, what happened, man? Why wasn't it Steven Yoon? You know, so I, I just, I think it's going to be really tough. I just hope this movie's good. And I think it will be. Although now, Yoon is on the, uh, the beef bench with Ali Wong. Remember I've been saying they have the director directing Thunderbolts, Jake Schreier from Beef. They have uh, Lee Sung Jin, who wrote Beef and created it, coming on board. I like Jonathan Groff, Poke, 1855. Jonathan Groff, I would solve all problems. I love him so much. I'd be so supportive of him in any role. Jonathan Groff would be great. He was pretty good with some of the visual effects action sequences in Matrix. Charles Melton's an interesting idea, Mika. That's a very interesting idea. You guys are good. You have your producer hats on today. But I don't know. I think Charles Melton is in a very precarious spot right now with his career. Can he be taken seriously? Uh, because, of course, he jumped from Riverdale 
to Oscar contender. That's an incredible jump. Nobody has ever jumped like that before in the history of jumping. Uh, and so I feel like he needs another serious movie to kind of keep going. Uh, yeah, anyone in the cast of The Iron Claw could do it. Did you see Jeremy Allen White? You know, he's like, what do I do with all these new muscles? I know, be the body of Calvin Klein. Uh, and it was hilarious. It was like West Side Story by way of Calvin Klein. It was a very effective ad. Trended for hours. It was impressive. But I don't know if he'd be a good sentry. Uh, but everyone's like, yes, we saw the Jeremy Allen White campaign. <laughs> he was doing the pull down his underwear move, right? Hilarious. Very, very funny. Uh, but yeah, but, so anyway, back to Thunderbolts. Uh, so it's the beef team, and that was a very dark adult show. So I think that would be great. I, I mean, I think it's going to be very strong. I hope it's R-rated, and I hope that some of these super soldiers bite it. I hope they're red shirts. Although, I saw, I saw some of you already say this, Zemo better be in the movie. He better be in the movie. It's not too late. They delayed the sh shooting of the film. By the way, yeah, Beef is awesome, 80s model. If you haven't watched Beef, go watch Beef. It's an incredible show. You should watch it just because it's good. Uh, but, yeah, Zemo has got to be in this movie because he's already in the MCU. They already fixed him in Falcon and Winter Soldier. That's right, with his amazing dance moves. And, the fact, and he started uh, Thunderbolts in the comics. So if he's not in the movie, even a little bit, we're all going to be like, that was a great movie, but where's Zemo? So it's like a little bit like when Birds of Prey, they didn't put Barbara Gordon in it. It's like, you, you got to do it. I mean, like, you just have to, because it's just too bizarre to not have that person on the team. I mean, again, some of you might be like, I don't know anything about Thunderbolts, right? Like, you don't care if Zemo's there, because you don't even know if he's supposed to be there. But the point is, the core fandom that pushes this thing, and, we're, you, you know, you need us to geek out over it. You need us to geek out about it on the social media. So that's how you do it, by having Zemo dance his way through Thunderbolts. You kill a bunch of the, of the red shirts, and we all go, that's amazing. It's just like the comics. And then everybody else goes, oh, maybe I should check it out. So let's see. Let me ask you if you think it's, if Zemo needs to uh, no, do another poll. Should, does, Zemo, does Zemo need to be in Thunderbolts? Yes. No. There's just two options on that. <clears throat> Anyone can vote in a poll again. Remember, you don't have to be a member to vote in the poll. You have to be a member to, to chat, but you don't need to be a member to vote in the poll. Oh, look at the yes. Oh, it's winning so hardcore. All right, so while you guys vote on that, does anybody have any questions or comments? about Thunderbolts, because that's, that, that's my thoughts on the situation. Yeah, I love Daniel Bruhl. Have you seen Rush with Thor in it? Chris, uh, Chris Hemsworth? Amazing movie. Chris says, is he big screen worthy than it? He's been on Disney Plus. He sure is, because he's so great. I mean, like, that's back when the Disney Plus series were the level of a movie. Remember the first three? Those were movie level. Mr. Poppy, I think that's why, you know, you said, do you recast with another Asian actor? That's why I think Charles Melton's an excellent suggestion. Jake Van Norden says, didn't they get rid of ghost powers in Ant-Man and the Wasp? Oh, I'm sure she had a relapse. <laughs> It's easy. Oh, Seattle Laundered, you're always so generous. So happy. I hope you had a happy holiday, Seattle Laundered. Uh, the lead Care Bear, you know, it used to be Elena, but now I think they've re rewritten it. So I think Bucky's technically the lead, but it's probably, I would think it's a two-hander. I mean, if Elena's in the movie, she's going to be a lead because she is a, just a powerful personality. I can see that. I mean, I can see it. I mean, they're tr it's basically Marvel Suicide Squad, and they don't quite have the they don't quite have the mischievousness of the Suicide Squad, you know, particularly David Ayer's version of it. You know, they're missing that fun factor. This is a very serious group of people, uh, you know. But Yelena, I think, is the closest they can get maybe to a Harley Quinn. You know, she's not bad, you know, because her heart, her her Yelena, her her Black Widow um, is a little silly. 
Al Watch says, did you like the Thunderbolts comic? I don't like it. I want bad guys. Yeah, I didn't like the new Thunderbolts. They relaunched Thunderbolts with Hawkeye. Did not care for it. It had a great cover. I bought it. I was all excited. I was like, oh. I haven't heard anything about Songbird official, Liam. That's not to say maybe she shows up like in an end credit sequence or maybe she, they, she, she is there, but I haven't heard anything about a Songbird. And that's another thing. If you're a fan of Thunderbolts, you're going to be upset that Songbird isn't in this movie. Juan Carlos says, I'm a fan of Daniel Brühl. Um, <clears throat> he was great on Merry Christmas, World War I Christmas Truce, Colonia with Emma Watson. I recommend both movies. He's fantastic. He is, 100%. And then Nicholas says, Disney already has shown they don't care about fandom opinions. Just look at the new Star Wars drama. Disney is dead. Uh, I, don't th I don't think so. I think Marvel's pretty good at it. I think they care about fan opinions. Oh, Gareth. Oh, everybody's back. It's so nice. I feel like we've had a little bit of a break. It's so nice to see you guys. Gareth with your Golden Girls uh, avatar. I love it. So let me see what the poll was. Leo says, is Adam Driver going to be in Thunderbolts? I don't know. Why even you even makes you even ask that? That's hilarious. Uh, Zemo, 75% say he needs to be in Thunderbolts. So look, many of you don't even know who Sentry is, but you know who Zemo is, and that's really overwhelming. Ah, oh, J-Lo, it's so good to see you back as well, with five memberships as well. Ah, oh, you guys are great. BTT VIPs for sure. Oh, that's right, Lev. Uh, uh, Ayo Edebiri is in Thunderbolts, but I don't know if she's Songbird or not. I haven't heard who she's playing. Uh, thank you, Tiff. Uh, but that's great that she, you know, that's really cool. Um, she could be Songbird, maybe. That would be Ray spending the character, but I love Ayo Edebiri. I'd be happy to see her. I think she could do anything. Matthew says, do you think MC will begin to connect the dots with continuity at some point soon? I hope so. I do believe that is the trick to their success, that everything is linked. You know, you feel like I've been speaking to a number of people like casually and some of the, I've had more than one person say they just couldn't keep up with it anymore because there was just too much. Uh, and, um, and, and so I hope that they get that back. Steven says, do people actually even want Thunderbolts? Like how many fans do these characters even have? No, I disagree, Steven. I want Thunderbolts. Let me ask. We'll do one more poll. This is a poly story. Do you even want a Thunderbolts movie? Heck yeah. Oh, thanks, Bumblebee. Thank you for gifting five memberships. Heck yeah. Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, and then waste of an MCU movie. All right, again, anyone can vote in a poll. Anyone can vote in a poll. Uh, let's see here. The Fawns 25. Uh, we can't talk about, I, I'm under embargo on Echo. I can't talk about Echo. Um, I haven't seen, only the first three episodes have been given to press. So I haven't even seen the finish. And I think that's going to be important to the show. Um, <clears throat> uh, but I'm really glad that the, the, the Native American community is excited about the character. I hope it goes well next week for you guys. I hope, I hope everybody loves the show. Hey, Watu, thank you for gifting a membership. So anyone can vote in a poll, by the way. Anyone can vote in a poll. You don't have to be a member. All right. I do love some David Harbour poke. I didn't even think about him being in the movie. I don't think he's doing the voice in that what if teaser for season three. I was like, that doesn't sound like David Harbour. And what is David Harbour doing that he can't do the voice for this? All right, we'll give another moment on the vote and then we'll move to the next story. All right. All right, I'm going to move on to the next story. Here we go. All right. Oh, hey, hey Ohad in Tel Aviv. Stay safe. 
Um, so let's see here. 38% say, sure, why not? Not exactly a ringing endorsement, but at least it's positive. 31% feel it's a waste of an MCU movie and 29, basically thirds to a degree. And the 29% say, heck yeah. So 70 or 69% of you want the movie or you'll take it. So that's pretty good. I'm surprised so many of you don't want the movie. That's interesting to me. It looks great to me. I really want this movie. I'm especially, I bet, I wonder how many of you who voted you don't want it didn't see beef. Because if you'd seen beef, you would have known that it was a good, it's going to be good. All right, let's move on to the next story of the day. All right, hold on. All right. Boop. Okay, so David Ayer, <clears throat> he finally said in the last few hours, here's his tweets. He says, uh, I'm done with DC. I'm done with those jerks. There it is. I'm done with DC. I'm done with them. I hate them so much. And then he also, someone asked for some further clarification. And he said, nothing about the situation feels good. Studio has no interest in releasing it. It's time to run and not look back. Eh, all right. So here's my thoughts on it. And I'll, I'll, let's do a poll while I talk, okay? Oh, not a super chat. Hold on. Do you think <clears throat> the air cut should be released. No, it's stupid. No, it missed its window. And then give it to me. Okay. And again, anyone can vote in a poll. You only members can chat, but anyone can vote in a poll. All right, so I have to say that I felt this was never going to happen. As soon as David Ayer started campaigning for it, it was like, whoa, get off Zack Snyder's coattails, man. I mean, I think if you thought we could get the Ayer cut, it totally, you totally misunderstand what drove the Snyder cut, and that was injustice. And that's because how Zack Snyder was treated by particularly Jeff Johns and the movie leadership at Warner Brothers at that time, that he had been ripped off of his movie under uh, false circumstances, you know, <clears throat> which is interesting. And then, uh, you know, had been forced to say, oh, yeah, this is what I wanted. And then, you know, have his work just completely massacred by Joss Whedon. Uh, when, you know, you know, he wasn't, in, I just think, you know, it, you know, Hollywood's a tough business. Uh, but I just feel like the way it was handled was really, really unfortunate. And, you know, something that was unusual so that's why everybody wanted to see Zack Snyder's cut of the movie. But David Ayer just didn't like how his movie turned out. And there's a ton of directors in the same boat. Everybody has to contend with studio executives. Everybody doesn't get their cut. That's why there's director's cuts in the first place. And so, you know, remember like Kathy Yan was jumping on there too, saying like, what about my birds of prey? And you're like, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, and, you know, by the way, a ton of directors are able to get a good movie out. So it's ridiculous. So you just can't go and cry about it because everybody has to deal with studio interference. Everybody has to deal with it. Everybody has to, you know, make those compromises. And yet their movies sometimes turn out really good or at least even watchable. So it's just nuts. And so I knew that he was never going to get an A or cut, but yet he persisted with it. Uh, and he should just, by the way, take heart that he influenced these characters so substantially. You know, he particularly Harley Quinn, but also just, cre you know, ma making the Suicide Squad a household name. I mean, we just talked about Marvel trying to do their own version. And none of that would have existed, you know, without some of the elements that David Ayer can, you know, lay claim to. Uh, so now he says he's giving up. He, he feels he's shouting into the void. Although, remember, when James Gunn first took over DC, David Ayer said that James Gunn had been encouraging. Now, nobody knows for sure if that's true. Nobody knows if James Gunn actually was encouraging or if maybe David Ayer just mistook their interaction for encouragement. Because, you know, David Ayer seems a little bit not connected to reality, uh, at least in this situation. He's too close to it. The emotions are still too raw. But we do know that James Gunn, you know, led a couple of people along, only to then be like, you know, who dis when they tried to call. <laughs> right? Now, I think that, and I, by the way, I don't think James Gunn should release the Ayer cut. I mean, by the way, as we discussed on Movie Math, uh, you know, these, the, the, the public domain is coming up fast for these DC characters, particularly, uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, just like a decade away. 
So like the, they're really you know, like underfoot here at Warner Brothers or whoever eventually ends up owning the DCIP. You know, by the, by the time this year is over, we'll see what happens. It could be quite interesting. Uh, but they don't have time to futz around with like the past. They got to move forward aggressively. Uh, and so they're not, they're not, not going to do that. Uh, I think the best thing that David Ayer and Zack Snyder can do is to just make more great movies. Instead, they're going around proving their detractors right. I mean, Rebel Moon, I said, is good for the Snyder fandom, but it also, you know, is a prime example of some of his, of some of his bad tendencies. Uh, so, you know, it, and it wasn't as big as everybody had thought it would be. And oh, by the way, the Snyder Cut wasn't either. Uh, that's the, one of the main reasons they didn't do the uh, Ayer Cut. If the Snyder Cut was crashing HBO Max at the time, they would have said, give us the Snyder Cut right now. I mean, the Ayer Cut right now. I mean, I was telling you those views were low. Uh, I know some people, it's very unfortunate, and I think I told you this before, that with the Zack Snyder cut, because part of it was the original movie, I know some, like, casuals who turned, on, who turned it on or saw the trailers and were like, it looks just like the other movie. And that's unfortunate because, of course, it was so much different. Uh, but, you know, because the first movie was bad, people are like, why do I want to sign on for a four-hour version of that? And it just really was unfortunate. I wish that they had been able to do it episodically, but as I told you, everybody had signed movie contracts and Warner Brothers didn't want to negotiate new deals so it couldn't be done as a four, like a four episode series, which I think would have benefited it substantially. That would have been chatter about it. I think it will work much better. And then David Ayer has The Beekeeper coming out. I mean, come on. Nobody's going to be like, yeah, David Ayer was robbed. They're like, I suspect, David, that it's more like, more like The Beekeeper. And you'd probably be right. I mean, I'd like to see, you know, like if somebody wanted to show me that Joker, uh, Joker, <clears throat> Joker tuxedo scene, then I'd be like, sure, I'll look at it. But I'm not, I'm not sad that I'm never going to see it, to be honest with you. I mean, I've seen some pictures of it. It's fine. You know, I think particularly because also think about how things have deteriorated since that movie came out. Jared Leto, that ruined his career. And, you know, he helped, he helped, he helped by doing some other really bad movies. Uh, but then also Will Smith, uh, you know, Will Smith with what happened at the Oscars with uh, Chris Rock. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's continuously being brought up. Uh, Chris Rock had a really strong uh, discussion about it on his Netflix comedy special. And then also I, I watched the Dave Chappelle special, which was, I think, you know, again, he cried a couple of times. You were like, come on, Dave. But other times it was very funny. And also he had an excellent close like a really moving story to the end of, the, of this comedy special. But he spent a good deal of his comedy special talking about the Will Smith slap as well. Although, to some degree, he defended Will Smith a little bit, which I thought was interesting. And I thought he had some points uh, to both sides. He just boiled it down more to a really unfortunate conversation. Although he did say that Will Smith should not have been able to stay at the Oscars. Uh, after that, you know, after that incident. And, you know, I think everybody was just so shocked they didn't know how to handle it. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. It's, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting situation. But so Will Smith, he's not really working right now because of what happened. I mean, we'll see how Bad Boys 4 does. That's going to be the big test. And then also Margot Robbie, who we're about to talk to with Barbie. Margot Robbie went on and became this huge producer star with Barbie. Uh, her best thing yet, in fact. And she's been the most mature about potentially leaving her DC life behind. Uh, but and I'm like, by the way, before I was like Margot Robbie, great producer, not a great, you know, she doesn't always choose good roles for herself. But I've been loving her campaign for Barbie. She had like the greatest quote about being a producer and how she pitched Barbie to Warner Brothers that's going around. I'm like, wow, Margot Robbie is firing in all cylinders right now. <clears throat> I'm, oh, let's see if it finally gets her that Oscar, <clears throat> which is hilarious because she, of course, made a lot of bad, crappy movies trying to win an Oscar. And she finally wins it maybe playing Barbie. So does anybody have any questions or comments about the Ayer cut before we move on to the next story? That's right, Nacho Flores. I'm on Team Margot Robbie now. I'm, I'm like, I'm coming over here. I still think she needs a new stylist, but whatever. She's gorgeous. I mean, she's gorgeous in a paper bag as opposed to like a great outfit. Oh, close the poll. Thank you, Alex. All right, so you guys, how you feel about the Ayer cut? <clears throat> Uh, it says, uh, you guys said 38% of you think it's stupid and 38% of you feel it missed its window, uh, which means, you know, maybe at one point you would have had an interest in seeing it, but at this point, 
why bother? Uh, but overwhelmingly, <clears throat> that is 77% of you basically uh, are like, no, thank you. But only 20, so 23% of you want to see it. But that's really just not enough for the, for the effort. <clears throat> hey, Drago, New York City, thank you for gifting a membership. That's right, Dory. Warner Brothers Discovery is pretty cheap already, so there's no way uh, that they're going to do it anyway. <clears throat> Did somebody give some memberships that I missed? I don't think so. Okay. Um, all right. Any other questions or comments about this? Polk says, Grace, if you were running DC, what would you do? I never would have released it. I mean, again, if the Snyder Cut had done really strong numbers, then I would have been like, give me the air cut right away. But because it didn't do strong numbers, I guess, I, I guess what I would have done is I wouldn't have led David Ayer on. I would have been like, don't embarrass yourself anymore, David. We're not going to do it. Here's a fruit basket. I don't know. But, I mean, but I don't want to give David Ayer any work. So I don't really know how I can make it up to him. <laughs> Christmas card? Tom Cruise coconut cake? So that's the situation. See, it's tough being a studio executive. Sometimes you just, oh, edible arrangement, Nicholas Louie. People like those. They're fancy. They're fancy. Like it's pineapple shaped as a flower. Does that cheer you up? I mean, I, I just, I mean, also, the, remember that movie that he made for uh, Bright for Netflix about pixies? A pixie thriller. Hey, Tom, thank you for gifting a membership. A casserole. You guys are great. I love it. All right, so, oh, so that's interesting. I'm sorry, I can't read your name, uh, but you said, why doesn't David Ayer just leak it himself like Ryan Reynolds so famously did and gave himself a career? Well, that's because unlike Zack Snyder, David Ayer didn't have the forethought to copy all of his footage. <laughs> Zack Snyder, because he works so much from home and has his own setup and everything and is more of an auteur, he had a copy of all the footage. It was in black and white. That's why, this, that's why the Snyder Cut was in black and white, because he'd been editing it in black and white for so long, or a lot of it was, that's, you know, because he'd been editing it in black and white for so long, because, you know, that's a, you know, you, you know you're... Because you edit digitally, you know your entry point. So you can just, you know, put the color film into the system to, to do that formula. But so Zack Snyder had all the footage. He could do a, a Zack Snyder cut and he could threaten to release it. Remember he was showing pictures of it? He screened it for the, for the crew. I mean, for the cast, for the, for the Just, Justice League cast. Uh, although, remember I told you Henry Cavill was n like the only one not invited. Uh, so, uh, so like that's why Zack, so Zack did that. Riley still said, did Zach get any penalties for that? Well, I think he was like in a legal gray area, but you know, I don't think Warner Brothers wanted the publicity of, of suing him, especially because he had so many fans behind him. But yeah, so uh, David Ayer doesn't have it. He can't release it. You know, he should have been like, copy my cut onto this hard drive, or this to this uh, thumb drive, please. And then he'd been like, ha ha. You know, that's right, Mika. The Batgirl directors don't have a copy of their movie either. Or they could have, although, I think that Arby and Falaw still have a chance of working again uh, because Bad Boys did so well. Uh, but I think David Ayer is pretty down at the end of his rope. So I could see David Ayer releasing it. But, uh, but then he, I think also, I think if you have it, Warner Brothers won't sue you. But I think if you release it, they'll sue you. I mean, because it's lost revenue to them and it's not your, it's not your property. So, yeah. All right, so let's move on to the third story, and then we can do the, uh, the Ask Me Anything portion of the stream. Do, 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 do. All right, boom, baby. Barbie, back in the news. But uh, it's a speed bump in her Oscar campaign. All right, so in the Oscars, you get to campaign for whatever category you want. And more often than not, uh, people have, like, a problem with when they decide to put someone in lead or supporting. Because it's like, where do you think you have the best shot at winning? Like, for instance, Paramount and Apple feel that Lily Gladstone is a lead. But people are like, put her in supporting. She'd have a better chance of winning. But they're like, no, we're going for lead. We dare you not to give her the Oscar. And so 
That's like usually the way it goes down. Uh, but Barbie has been campaigning for original screenplay. And in fact, the Writers Guild of America has said that it's an original screenplay. And it's up for that in many other awards, like Critics' Choice, where I'm a member. It's nominated for Best Original Screenplay. Uh, and also, I'm sure for the Writers Guild, it'll be up for Best Original. Uh, but the Writers Branch and the Oscars were like, nope, 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 adapted. And they threw a giant wrench into the Oscar screenplay sec- situation because they've now probably taken somebody out of the adapted section because Barbie will probably get nominated there or maybe it won't get nominated at all. What? I think it'll get nominated. But then that means it opens up a spot for someone in original. Uh, Now, I was speaking to a writer friend of mine before this happened, like a month or so ago, when people, I was trying to figure out if Barbie was an adapted or original because some of you are asking me about it. So I asked a writer friend of mine and my writer friend said, but Barbie is not based on a product that has a story to it. It's just a doll. And the only really line, only really thing that was set up was that Ken was Barbie's boyfriend. I guess, I guess that the dolls existed and they're, they're the basic relationship they have to each other. But Barbie doesn't have an origin story. Uh, you know, there's been never like an, it's not based on like a Barbie animated movies or, or series. It's a totally original story. So that's why my writer friend uh, said that it shouldn't be uh, adapted. Uh, you know, it should, it should, so it should be original. But it uh, doesn't matter. The Oscars have spoken. All right, so an adapted, will it kick one of these out? These are the nominations um, uh, for best uh, adapted screenplay for Critics' Choice and the frontrunners for the Oscar. Oppenheimer, now it has to go up against Oppenheimer again. American Fiction, Poor Things, All of Us Strangers, and Killers of the Flower Moon. I think Barbie could knock one of those out. Uh, Sorry, Emmanuel, we're not at the Q&A just yet, but I'll come back to your question. So I think Barbie could knock one of those out, but maybe not. I can't see Barbie not getting nominated because it's such a brilliant script, and everybody in the industry thinks it's a brilliant script. Remember when um, Simu Liu was cast, he, when he was talking about Barbie, he said, my agent and I agree, it's the best script we've ever gotten. Script, 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 script. So wouldn't it be crazy if it, uh, if it, if it took Oppenheimer, I mean, it would be nice if Oppenheimer and Barbie could have walked both away with screenplay Oscars, but now they're competing in the same category. Uh, then uh, with original, now this leaves an opening because you had the holdovers, past lives, May, December, and anatomy of a fall, but now no Barbie. So that means maybe odds just got better for Maestro or Air to get into best uh, original screenplay for the Oscars. The Oscar nominations, by the way, come out uh, January 23rd. Uh, so for those of you wondering about the awards situation, the Golden Globes are this Sunday, I'll be live tweeting them, even though I don't think anybody cares. And then um, I was going to do a full live stream about the Golden Globes on uh, the day after. But now it's going to have to be split with the Jonathan Majors interview because he's going on Good Morning America. Disney, by the way. He's going on Good Morning America and doing a tell-all interview. So uh, we can't not talk about that. So that's, mon- that's, a, that's Monday. That's going to be quite the live stream. Uh, and then... Uh, then the Critics' Choice Awards are a week after that. Then the Emmys are the day after that because they were delayed, remember? And so they're January 15th. And then the Oscars are January 23rd. And we also have the SAG nominations and a bunch of stuff like that as well. Uh, so let's see what happens with this. Does anybody have any questions or comments about the Barbie situation? And then we'll go to the Q&A. I have a true detective review also. I think we're going to do a live stream tomorrow. I promised you a live stream tomorrow. We'll do it. Um, and then, uh, uh, there's a, my true detective review will be going up as well. Tyler Rod says that Disney wants to control the major's narrative. I don't think so. I think that, uh, I think they would prefer he didn't speak about this at all. (laughs) You know, Steven says, I find it interesting Barbie is adapted for being based on a toy when May, December is original, though, original, even though it's heavily based on a true story. I love it, Steven. You could be Barbie's lawyer or agent and go in there and be like, what the heck, Academy? And May, December is like, leave us out of this, man. We're having a hard enough time. You know, Charles Melton's our only real chance at an Oscar. I'm glad you feel that way, Sensation. I will definitely do a live stream tomorrow. All right, you guys don't. Okay, oh yeah, that's a good idea, Rashad. Let me ask you. 
Gigi, hey Gigi, no, this is a final decision, this is done. What category do you think Barbie uh, belongs in? Original, adapted. Because even if you hate it, you still have to have an idea as to where it belongs. Poly pole pole. That's right, Care Bear. Those aren't original ideas either. They're also based on true stories. So how is that original? Oh, you just destroyed Oscar ca screenplay categories. So anyone can vote. Anyone can vote in a poll. We'll give it a moment. Don't worry, I'll go back to that question I missed. Austin Williams says, which one do you think it has a better chance in? Original. I think going up against Oppenheimer is going to be tough. We can only hope that people feel that Oppenheimer is devoid of all emotion, which is usual for Christopher Nolan movies. But for some, but for some reason, everybody really, really fell head over heels in love with uh, Oppenheimer. I think they fell in love with Oppenheimer because of the craft aspect to it. I think they're like, yes, great movies can still be made that aren't based on a toy or a, to or a comic book or something. Oh, John Kamara, I will post my Critics' Choice ballot for sure. Uh, I get to st it's going to come out tomorrow, so I'll post it sometime tomorrow. David, I would love to. I don't know. Celine Song's Past Lives is actually based on her own life. So that actually dinged that movie for me a little bit in terms of, like, originality. Speaking of originality, because I'm like, wait a minute, this actually happened to Celine Song. Like, it's basically, she's, it's her own story. Zach Abbey says this sets a bad precedent. I like the seriousness of that. And then Lewis Cook says, what would you choose to win best original screenplay? Well, I would have chosen Barbie. But I guess at this point, I, maybe I would go with Past Lives, to be honest with you, because I did like the movie. Holdovers are Past Lives. Hey, Cat Shack. Thanks for gifting a membership. I like your picture. You look pretty cool there. Andro, Andro, Andro says, BTT Movie Awards. Let's do our community choice. Oh, that's funny. The BTT Movie Awards. I used to do that, actually. But, you know, you really need an awards year where people care more about what's nominated. It was much easier when it was Avatar and Batman and stuff that people really were excited about. Oh, Owl Watch, it's not that one of these awards is lesser than the other. It's more that, you know, what does Barbie have a better chance of winning? All right, let me end this poll, and then we'll go to the Ask Me Anything. Okay. So 71% of you agree, original. But 28% of you feel it belongs in Adapted. You just want to see it lose to Oppenheimer. That's what I think's going on there. That's right, Tiff. I will be doing who will win and who should win with the, go with the Oscar nominations, for sure, as a video. You know, usually, sometimes I do them as a live stream, but that'll be a video. Because that's the Oscars. The Oscars. All right, so we'll do the Q&A. Hold on. Boop, 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 boop. Let me go find that question. There we go. All right. Oh, no, that way. All right, Emmanuel. Emmanuel says, I think Captain Carter and Kahori were really interesting and well-written in the recent What If Season 2. Do you think there is a good reason why some people don't like the new season? Because it used them as main characters. Uh, I liked both of those characters as well. I thought, you know, the season finale I thought was weak for What If Season 2. But I thought that uh, all the Captain Carter episodes up until that point, and also Kahori's standalone episode, were incredibly well done. So uh, I think that, you know, I do feel like there have been a lot of female characters that have been the center, central point of a lot of genre stories recently. And, you know, it's like everybody decided to do it. And I think that, there, you know, you have to realize you're going to lose a couple of people when you do that. Uh, and you have to just be okay with that. Uh, but I think for the most part, I think the po I think I've seen very positive chatter about what if season two, and they're doing a season three. Um, but I would tell them for season three, if they're going to add a new original character, it's time to bring in a dude. You got two great women, bring in a dude, and I think it'll just help. A rising tide lifts all boats. 
So I think that'll be great. But I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything negative about, you know, I think some people think Captain Carter's a little bland, but uh, I don't agree. But I haven't seen anything about negative about Kahori. Jaden says Oppenheimer was depressing. It sure was. Uh, yeah, Shawshank was fantastic. Great rewatch, Jaden. Good choice. Zach Abbey says, I think it undermines Greta's script to say it's adapted. Oh, that's a really good point because it's just so incredibly original. Uh, let's see here. I saw a funny question there. Hold on. Oh, Matthew says, who's your favorite housewife? That's a tough one. I like Garcelle a lot right now. Uh, FC says, heard about Chad Stahelski interested in Blade? No, I haven't. But if he takes it on, I would be ecstatic. I love Chad Stahelski. Although I think, I think John Wick's chapter four made it clear that Chad Stahelski needs a really strong writer. And he didn't have that with chapter four. So that makes me a little bit nervous. Welm says, how are artists paired with comic book writers in the industry? Do writers choose their artists? What was your experience with this writing superbia? Oh, that's such an interesting question. Well, uh, I actually, uh, Boom Studios found Russell Dodderman for me. That was his first big gig, actually. And based on that comic, uh, Marvel took notice of uh, Russell and, uh, you know, got him for the X-Men, which I think was a fantastic choice. Uh, I'm so happy. I mean, I got to um, have a say in the artist that I worked with, uh, but Boom suggested artists to me. And I was like, yes, Russell, Russell Donnerman is incredible. Uh, so I was very fortunate to, to be able to work with him uh, on the comic book that I created, uh, Super, great, uh, uh, Superbia. Uh, it's called actually Grace Randolph's Superbia, which, uh, which I thought was very nice of them. Um, but... Um, uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, you'll get matched with an artist, but sometimes you, you know, especially for creator owned projects, you know, an artist. And so that's really the, how the situation works. Happy one year anniversary to us, Rick 71. I love it. Oh, Josh loves movie says, what are your thoughts on Jack Black playing Steve in the Minecraft movie? I've never played Minecraft in my life. I have to research it. I know nothing about it. But I will say that Jack Black teaming up with Jason Momoa just seems like Jumanji to me. So we'll see how it is. Are they going to be all squares like Minecraft, like the blocks? Vin says, Grace, my question is, how do you think Marvel Comics can reclaim former glory? I think for both DC and Marvel Comics, I wish that the comic book industry was more professional. It's still, they still hire friends and people they know. They're like, hey, do you want to write a Marvel or DC comic? And they're like, I'd love to. You know, there are no agents. Uh, there's no really strong, like, legit submission process. It's all who you know, which has led to some abuse over the years. Abuse of power and abuse of people, uh, which I've, you've seen those stories. And that comes because that's the only way that you can get work, through personal relationships. And that's just not professional at all. And I think it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. I also think they need new leadership. I mean, uh, when Paul Levitz was running DC and Karen Berger was running Vertigo Comics, it was incredible. Hey, Mr. Magic. Ethan says, I know you said it was a mess, but what will it take for Kathleen Kennedy to be out of there? I'm sorry to say it, but she needs to go. Her contract's almost up. I mean, if she gets another renewal... And then there's nothing. Uh, Poke says, why did you stop writing the comic? Oh, well, that was uh, Boom Studios' decision. Boom is the one that decides, you know, I think they're really interested in um, doing shorter runs. I mean, my, it ran for 16 issues, my comic. Hey, Mr. Poppy. But, you know, they're then more interested in being able to sell it. Oh, Vicente, did I miss your super chat? Hold on, I'm going back. Oh, I missed a couple here. Hold on. Okay. Mm, I think I'm caught up here. Yes. 
Okay, so let me get these. All right. Um, so Tiff says, have you heard of Final Fantasy VII? I have not. Uh, Vicente says, do you think that Carrie Mulligan portraying a Latina in Maestro, despite being white, destroys her awards chances? That, you know, Maestro is all over the place in terms of representation, but Bradley Cooper as well in his role. Um, I don't think Carrie Mulligan's going to win, probably for a number of reasons. I think because primarily Maestro is not a particularly good movie. She's pretty good in it, but, um, you know, I think, you know, we're still not at a point where what Hollywood cares about matches what audiences care about. So it's hard for me to get a read on it because I know that some people, although nobody's really paying, I haven't really heard anything about Carrie Mulligan, although I do agree with you that it would have been nice to cast somebody who was Latina to play someone, you know, who was Latina. Uh, Rodrigo, I will review the new Mean Girls. My press screening is next week. Ivan says, Happy New Year, Grace. They said that Fantastic Four will start filming this May. When can we expect the casting announcement? At this point, your guess is as good as mine. You know, uh, everybody was thinking it was going to be right after the strikes were done and then right after the New Year, and we got nothing. I don't care, Bear says, Barbie's category change clearly feels like a stunt from the Academy to continue Barbenheimer to get people to tune in. You think? I don't, I mean, it's, I think it's pretty serious, and they're already competing in a number of other categories. Oh, Poke says, will you do a video about the Emmys? I did do a video on the Emmy nominations when they first came out. So now what I'm going to do is cover the, um, the show and the winners. Oh, Riley Steele, I'm so glad you're watching Harley Quinn, the animated show. So incredible. Love that show. OC Dinah says, do you think Canary will be recast for the DCU? As a person of color and member of the LGBT community, I find Journey support of her brother's actions beyond harmful. Praying for, again, very complex stuff. But I mean, at the same time, how can you ask someone not to support their sibling? You know, I didn't see her like going hardcore and supporting him, but I think she can't like abandon her brother. I feel most people were very happy with her performance in that role. But I think you're not going to be seeing Black Canary for a very long time. Anyway, no matter who's playing her. Let's see. Away says, finished... T B O C A C S for the what's what is this what oh oh the Hunger Birds, uh, in the Hunger Games uh, songbird thing for the fifth time it's tied with Guardians of the Galaxy three for my number one spot of 2023. I'm so glad you liked it that much. That would explain why it's doing so well. Tom Blythe's performance was so great. I hope he gets more work from it. I would agree with that. And I thought everybody was pretty good in that movie, uh, except for Tom Blythe's pal. I did not care for him, but everybody else I thought was good. Charlie Michael, I don't know if I'm going to cover Doctor Who. I don't know. It might be like too much for me to get into. Uh, but uh, I was impressed with the, I, I, I scanned the first episode and I thought there was some good stuff in there. I liked the casting. Owen Tinkler says, hey Grace, did you watch the What If season three sneak peek? I did watch it. And I was like, I love What If. I think it's great. Enrique says, hey, oh, so yes, I, as I said, I will review the new Mean Girls. And, you know, I will be reviewing all episodes of Echo, yes. Uh, but I won't, I, I'll be doing a spoiler review because the review embargo lifts when the, um, when the show drops. So at that point, you'll already be watching. Uh, so I'm just going to jump right to getting you a spoiler review so we can talk about it. Uh, Juan Carlos, I'm not sure if they're going to be doing more. I'm sure they'll have another Avatar trailer. I wasn't able to cover the first Avatar, but I will be covering Avatar uh, going forward, very much so. Uh, Ryan, I haven't heard anything about a Wicked trailer. Oh, it's your very first live stream? I love it. Hey, Ryan, welcome to the party. Let's see here. Bumblebee says, given the MCU really doesn't have anything going on now with the Kang majors with, uh, with uh, being a big question mark, do you have any updated thoughts on why they aren't bringing in the X-Men sooner? I don't want the X-Men to come in sooner. Uh, don't rush them. I, don't want, I want them to be done well. Ariel Knight says, do you think a video game uh, based movie will ever win an Oscar? And how long would it take? Well, Ariel Knight, I think it would depend on the video game. I think you'd have to get something with a really strong uh, message and like some dramatic elements to it. And then maybe I could see it. I think your best bet is to first start off like a Dune or a Mad Max Fury Road, 
where you win a lot in the craft categories like visual effects and production design and costume design. Oh, let's see here. Happy New Year, Karaoke Ken. Oh, Kareem, I'm glad you like my shirt. This is from Anthropology. Although they made fun of Anthropology on Echo. <laughs> and I was like, I just bought a bunch of shirts from there. Let's see here. Thanks for gifting a membership, Mr. Poppy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, got to get some more questions here. Hold on. Ben Green says, should they put Scream 7 on ice now that Christopher Landon has walked away? I don't know about, I mean, maybe not permanently, but I would take a break on that. I would definitely take a break. Like a couple of year break. Elise, what do I think of the A24 new Civil War movie? Well, you know, it hits a little close to home, obviously, because our political situation and social situation mm -hmm. here is we're pretty divided, and nobody wants to sit through it or have to go through another civil war. But I have to say, Jesse Plemons really stole that trailer. He's only in it for a few seconds. Everyone was like, that looks great. Uh, Leo says, why hire good new talent when you can give part in a show to a niece or a nephew for cheap? Well, I don't know what you're referring to, Leo. Infinite Gamer says, is there anything you can spill about Cat 4? I really want that movie to be good. Uh, all I know is that they're significantly reworking it, and I hope it's a Rogue One situation where it's great. I want this movie to be good, too. Gigi says, I really hope Oppenheimer doesn't win script. It was very Western POV, and Nolan chose not to show the horrors of the atomic bomb and the consequences for Japan and the Japanese people. Thank you, Gigi. We're right on the same page. I think it should lose for that alone. Uh... But uh, many people don't agree with us, Gigi. And it's a, it's a group vote. We would not vote for it. But that, we're not the only vote. Brett Crandall says, Barbie certainly has an established backstory, though Robbie plays stereotypical Barbie. If the IP wasn't owned by someone like Santa, but I'm team adapted. She doesn't have an established backstory, Brett. What are you talking about? Are you talking about like the different jobs she has, like as Barbie? Nikita says, thoughts on the Pattinson, Downey Jr., Adam McKay movie getting scrapped. If they scrapped that movie, it must have been for a good reason, because I wouldn't scrap that. VTTV, why isn't your super chat working? I'll try and look for your question. Linda Jordan says, you're looking forward to snow this weekend, if it actually snows. Now it's just supposed to snow, like, in the, in the afternoon. I mean, in the, late in the morning and late, in, late, late at night, like, when you're sleeping, basically. So then I'll just be there for a slush. Kay Walton says, do you plan to watch Society of the Snow? I don't know. It looks really depressing and bleak. Um, and I, you know, I need a break from the bleakness. Kay Walton, that's a good point about, uh, um, about Journey, that she's not supportive of her brother's actions. She's just being supportive of her brother. John Kamara says, I watched Zone of Interest last night, and it's one of the most disturbing movie-going experiences that I've ever had. Oh, that's pretty interesting, John. You're making me want to watch it. Alawatch says, The Penguin is filming in New York City. I hope we see a Gotham Grace variant as an extra in the background. <laughs> that's funny. Um, I'm pretty excited about Penguin. For reasons I cannot say, I'm not in the show. Let's see here. Tiff said, um, is there a comic that you'd like to see adapted to film? One that hasn't been. There was actually. The creator of Image Comics wrote a really good comic book that never finished. I don't know if they could still do it. What was it? Eric Larson. He wrote... I think it was Eric Larson. Was it Eric Larson? Well, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it was an incredible comic. I loved it. I'll try and find it so I can send it. I'll tweet about it. Bye, Charlie Michael.
Roll the Bryce said, did you see that Christina Hudson is a part of Guns Architects? I did, as well as Tom King. And I think those are both weak choices. I mean, I kind of like Tom King, but I wouldn't let give Tom King free reign over anything. Shay, your super chat isn't working either? <clears throat> That's weird. You might be typing in a blocked word. And so it wouldn't show up for that reason. Iron Isa, I will cons- I think I'm going to make a I'm thinking I'm going to do some 2024 coverage for sure. Not Modern Art History says, Grace, tomorrow is my birthday, and I applied to work for Warner Brothers Discovery's PR team. Oh, that's great. Dream big. That's fantastic. Our fingers crossed for you. Oh, that's right. It's Nowhere Men. I think it was Nowhere. Is that where it was, Alejandro? Let me see. It is. Alejandro, yes, thank you. That's totally it. And no 50 pence, they never finished this story either. But that is an incredible comic, at least for a little while. Then it's awful. But it was really good for a little bit. <laughs> All right, uh, let me do some shout outs. Okay. Oh, Ace, I did 2023 rankings. I did them earlier in the month, which was a mistake. I'm not doing that again. I did movies and shows at the beginning of December because it was so slow, and I'd seen all the movies because of my uh, Critics' Choice. But it was too early to do them. It's too early. Eric Stevenson. Thank you, Ragu. All right, so what's going on with everybody? T- give me some shout-outs so I can say hi. Haunted Autumn says, cooking Cajun barbecue pulled pork in Minnesota. My house smells delicious. I don't doubt it. Let's see. Famous Amos. Oh, that's great. Says, finishing my work day in Queens. You're almost done. I love it. Uh, then Sweet Freedom. And then Sensation says, I'm in California freezing, watching your stream today. Is it cold in California? Uh, let's see here. Karaoke Ken says, greeting from West New York. We aren't getting much snow either. Love your channel. Stay blessed. Ah, uh, thanks, Karaoke Ken. Bye, writer boy. Little Baby Pizza is cleaning their bathroom and listening to me. Glad to keep you company during a grueling job. Let's see here. Riley Steele says, watching Harley Quinn season four and hoping for a season five. I think it got renewed. I think it did get renewed. Alejandro says, running finance scenarios as I listen from Costa Rica. Not at the beach house, though. Ah, oh, what a bummer. But that's cool, Alejandro. That's awesome. You can multitask like that. Rashad is hopping in the shower to get ready for work. I hope your dating life's going well, Rashad. We all liked meeting your date. Shahar says it's been cold in Florida as well. Ooh. And Rippy says, hi, Grace. Much love from Frost Cupcake Factory. Oh, cool. What a gr- Again, I think you've mentioned that before. What a great name uh, in the Cold Bay area. Let me Google Frost Cupcake Factory because you've piqued my interest. Ooh, here it is. Oh, it looks great. Looks delicious. Look at those. Here it is. Rippy, is this, do you work there? Is this your business? It looks delicious. You're surrounded by deliciousness. If you're in the Bay Area, go to Frost Cupcake Factory. Say hi. Say, where's Rippy? Hey, Mr. Magic in Portland. Aneka says, hi from SoCal. Was so depressed that I couldn't get out of bed yesterday, but your stream is making today a little easier. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you're having a rough time, Aneka. This is a rough time of year, but I'm glad I could lift your spirits a little bit. Tomorrow's always another day. Don't look back. Plow ahead. Lewis Cook is going to watch Anatomy of a Fall. Love it. While Joe87 is enjoying macaroni and chicken. And then Dr. Longmonkey is watching a new episode of For All Mankind tonight. And VTTV is not doing their homework. (laughs) 
Sorry. And then Ivan Sarmiento says, here in Mexico, about to go out to the movies with my fiance to watch Priscilla. We need more Jacob Elordi after Saltburn, which was great. Yeah, I heard they're selling a, like a, a candle based on the bathwater from that movie. Away says, eating an ice cream while also staying warm in my fluffy blanket. Look at you, you're cold on one end, hot on the other. I know it makes no sense that I'm eating ice cream in a freezing Nottingham, but white chocolate is nice. Hey, sometimes you gotta get your ice cream on. And Tom Barron says, I'm making dinner and listening to your stream in the Czech Republic, where my ancestors are from. My ancestors, oh, some of them are from the Czech Republic. So you are my peoples, Tom. Oh, bagel time. Oh, good luck with Night Swim. I didn't even bother to review it. And the RT score is low. But I hope you find something to enjoy about it. VHS says, used up all my cell charge watching the stream from work. Forgot charging cable at home, but it was worth it. Much love from San Diego. Ah, thanks, VHS. I'm glad you used your last bit of juice on, on uh, the stream. I love San Diego, uh, com home to Comic-Con, of course. And Kareem is getting ready for a trip to San Francisco this weekend. Now you have something to do. Go to that cupcake place. All right, everybody, I better get going and work on my True Detective review. It'll go up tomorrow, and there will be a live stream tomorrow, and it's going to be early. Tomorrow's live stream will be probably like at 11 a.m. around then because I've got some stuff i got to do. All right, everybody, bye. Bye, bye, bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. I love you guys.